It is early Monday on this July 30th, 2012, and with only two days remaining in the month, we are beginning to see an uptick in Atlantic Basin tropical weather activity. For anyone that has been watching over the past one to two weeks, you would know that we were expecting a bit of an increase in cyclonic development, possibly toward the tail end of July and within the first week or so of August. And as of this Monday morning, the Hurricane Center is now paying close attention to a new INVEST. It's being called 99L INVEST, which simply means the Hurricane Center is closely following a 1,009 millibar surface low that has developed along a tropical wave axis in the Central Atlantic Ocean. As is always the case with newly declared tropical disturbances, the Hurricane Center is now beginning to run their tropical weather model suite. And as you can see, all of these models are taking this tropical wave in the general direction of the Eastern Caribbean. Little can be taken away from the Channel 2 infrared loop, but we can still make out the very broad mid-level circulation associated with the tropical wave axis. And although convection is disorganized, it's more plentiful than some of the tropical waves that have since passed through the Cape Verde Islands in the main development region over the past one to two weeks. And that is because the area of low pressure has developed far enough to the south to where it has, at least so far, avoided the Saharan air layer and associated dry, dusty conditions. A more regional satellite animation puts this tropical feature into better perspective. We can see Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, and the Lesser Antilles out to the west of our developing tropical wave. And the first tropical wave is currently spreading over the Lesser Antilles, providing isolated shower and thunderstorm activity. And every so often you need a tropical wave out ahead of the main feature to help moisten up the atmosphere for the second one to possibly go ahead and develop. And that is certainly something that has been needed for any cyclogenesis in the main development region. As we can see on the water vapor, the dry air is very abundant out across much of the deep tropics. And we've also got an upper level low that is situated just to the north of both of our tropical waves. And if this tropical low were to form a little bit too far to the north or begin moving more northerly in the short term, it would also encounter not only the dry air, but more in the way of westerly vertical wind shear. And both of these components are going to play a vital role in the short term and long term forecast of this weather system. Low level convergence is highly needed for tropical systems to continue producing convection and thunderstorms. And we see that the greatest concentration of low level convergence is located along the intertropical convergence zone. So the ITCZ is still definitely supporting convection with the tropical wave, but it's going to be very important for the wave to begin producing its own convection if it wants to survive the trip across the Atlantic Basin. So this is going to be something that we will definitely keep an eye on, along with the latest low level vorticity. And as you can see, the first wave is beginning to move into the Eastern Caribbean. And while our system near 35 degrees west longitude is still elongated from east to west along the ITZZ, it could become a little bit more concentrated as it begins to gain a little bit of latitude. Also, as mentioned before, right now the upper level winds are not too hostile over our tropical weather system. And you can see some subtle hints of upper level ridging near the tropical wave axis. But if it continues to move a little bit more toward the north, it's going to run into a lot of westerly vertical wind shear. And you can see it better highlighted by the colors. We've got shear values in excess of 30 to 40 knots. And if this upper level trough remains steady or complacent over the Eastern Caribbean, it's going to eventually shear our system apart. But we're going to take a closer look at some of the next six to seven day model guidance to see if this pattern is going to hold true. Now what you're looking at here is the 200 millibar relative vorticity product. And this helps us to pinpoint areas of upper level troughing and upper level lows. And this feature, which is elongated from east to west, is known as the tropical upper tropospheric trough. And this trough oftentimes limits tropical development by enhancing the westerly vertical wind shear. But every so often, we can get an upper level low that splits off away from the trough and moves westward out ahead of the wave or in tandem with the wave. And it can actually help to enhance the upper level conditions needed for cyclone development. So the TUD is also going to be a major factor over the next week. A couple of moments ago, I talked about surface conversions being necessary for convection to continue to fire. And something equally as important in the deep tropics for convection is upper level divergence. Now, it is also important to realize that upper level divergence can be enhanced by two completely different entities. A more favorable one for tropical cyclone development would be divergence spawned by upper level ridging. And that is something that we can barely see on the latest chart from the University of Wisconsin. But divergence can also come in the upper levels in the form of vertical wind shear. 
and you can see the tropical wave that is being enhanced by the wind shear near the Lesser Antilles and while this is helping to enhance the convection this morning it is not helping the organization of that tropical wave. So the main thing you can take away by this is that if the pattern remains the way it is this morning for the next week or so we can anticipate our second tropical wave to approach the Caribbean and then fire off a lot of convection as it begins to interact with more in the way of westerly vertical wind shear but remain disorganized due to the shear unless we've got a more favorable divergent upper level ridge built in from the east and continue to slide into the Caribbean along with our disturbance. Also, in addition to the vertical wind shear in dry air being major components of the intensity forecast, we definitely cannot forget sea surface temperatures. And as we look at the latest sea surface temperature profile across the basin, and we first look at our position of our tropical wave, which is near 10 degrees north and 35 degrees west longitude, we see that as it begins to move westward toward the Caribbean, it's only going to move into regional waters that are more favorable as they get warmer down the road. Also, before we take a more in-depth look at the latest dynamical model forecast, we should study some of the latest steering products. And we're going to begin at the 700 to 850 millibar steering layer, which is for systems that are not well developed and are in the infancy stages, much like many of our tropical waves and we can see that many of these tropical waves are being pushed westward underneath the strong influence of a subtropical ridge situated over the central Atlantic. But keep in mind that if systems were to intensify into stronger systems like tropical storms or hurricanes, any trough that is over the east coast or any system that helps to weaken the ridge will be felt more by the tropical system and have the tendency to curve more toward the north. With that in mind, I would like to bring your attention to the latest Zero Z run of the Canadian CMC model forecast. And there really isn't much to be seen on the sea level pressure beginning at zero hours, but you can barely make out the tropical disturbance. And as we run the six day animation, we see that it develops this system fairly quickly and well to the east of the Caribbean islands. And finally, by day six, as a result of a stronger system developing more in the short term, it gets pulled to the north by more in the way of troughing and is to the north of San Juan, Puerto Rico as we head into Sunday. To put things into better perspective, this is the latest 700 millibar relative vorticity forecast from the CMC model, and this will help us to figure out why it's showing a track the way it does. And we can see at zero hours, which is right now, of course, we've got the disturbance with some mid-level ridging just to its north, and this mid-level ridging should hold steady for at least the next few days, but if the system were to strengthen as quickly as the CMC is indicating, it would feel the presence of the upper level low that we saw on the water vapor. And that upper level low does have a weak mid-level trough that dangles to the southwest. And a stronger system would feel the presence of that trough and have the tendency to want to move into it. And so therefore the CMC is placing the system to the south of Bermuda by the tail end of this upcoming weekend. As a forecaster, the first thing that comes into question is why exactly is the CMC developing this system so quickly? Well, first of all, you need to know from experience that the CMC model is by far one of the most aggressive models in the dynamical model group that likes to develop systems way too often and way too aggressively, and this is likely going to be another example of that. And as we look at the latest wind shear forecast, we've got the very dangerous upper level troughing that could be very detrimental to any tropical system that moves too close, but it's got the troughing and the subsequent wind shear just to the north of the system the whole time and just far enough to where it becomes not so much of a factor and that is what allows this system to intensify in this latest model run. Now let's go ahead and compare what we saw with the CMC to the latest forecast from the Zero Z run of the GFS model and the GFS is taking a much more conservative approach in the short term with a little bit slower development and therefore it takes the system on a bit of a more westerly track and as you can see it takes it into the Lester Antilles in roughly 144 hours and finally by the end of day seven it's sitting to the south of Puerto Rico. Due to the magnitude of the vertical wind shear and the dry air immediately to the north of this tropical area of low pressure the GFS scenario is a little bit more convincing and as we take a look at the 700 millibar vorticity forecast from the GFS, you can see the ridge holding steady just to the north of the system as it develops a little bit slower, and therefore this is promoting a bit more of a westerly track into the eastern Caribbean. The GFS shear forecast is also a bit more convincing by showing the main shear axis located just to the north of our system and maintaining its close proximity, which should help to keep at least somewhat of a lid on any type of tropical development before this wave axis pushes on into the East Caribbean. 
And finally, this is the latest look at the Zero-Z ECMWF model. And this is a good example as to why we are definitely not convinced that this system will develop into a tropical depression. As you can see initially, we've got our first tropical wave beginning to spread over the Lesser Antilles, but the one that we're keeping the most eye on is the tropical disturbance near 10 degrees north and 35 degrees west. And over the next 72 to 96 hours, you see that the vorticity max associated with it is beginning to increase, but beyond three and four days, it starts to lose some of its intensity. And as we move into late Friday evening, it's pushing into the East Caribbean, but still has nothing more than a very strong and vigorous tropical wave. So we've got some very significant timing, intensity, and track differences between the CMC, GFS, and European. So the most that we can take away from the guidance this morning is that interest in the East Caribbean should be paying attention to this system. And as we saw with the tropical weather outlook, the Hurricane Center does think that the chances of development within the next two days are at 20%. And thereafter, while things are a little bit more questionable, we've got questions regarding the dry air and also, more importantly, the westerly vertical wind shear that is already established over the Caribbean islands. But if that trough begins to lift a little bit more to the north, as we see with the CMC and GFS, then we could certainly be dealing with at least some type of tropical disturbance passing over the islands possibly as strong as a tropical depression or tropical storm but at this point things are a little bit too uncertain to really pinpoint so everyone should be closely following their latest forecast from the national hurricane center and we will be here at 28storms.com and the hurricane tracker app to supplement that information with a little bit more in the way of in-depth detail for anyone that is interested